Robert Tyson here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Linux VM in the cloud and connect to it using PuTTY. Here we go. So, first and foremost, you want to go ahead and be at the Elastic Compute Dashboard or EC2 Dashboard, and we're going to launch an instance. Give us some time to load. Go down to this Ubuntu server. We'll use Ubuntu 18. Select it. Keep the free tier checked. Go through your configuration instance details. It's using an SSD. Awesome. Go ahead and take a look at this rule, which is essentially an access control list on Amazon Web Services infrastructure that is allowing SSH to this VM from anywhere. That's what that all zeros means in IP. We could restrict this to our IP, just our public IP so that only devices from our network could connect to it. But for now, just worry about leaving that all zeros. Don't, don't worry about changing this for now. Just know in the future, if you wanted to secure this instance to be remotely accessible from only one subnet, you would have to change this right here. So let's go ahead and review and launch this. It's just warning us here that, hey, guess what? Anyone in the world can access this as long as they know the DNS name or public IP. But we're going to make sure they can't because we're going to have to generate a key. So go ahead and launch. What I want you to do is create a new key pair for this. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. I'm calling mine. Linux is great because it is. And I'm going to download it. I have that key pair now. You may want to put this in a secure location if this is going to be a production system. I'm, I'm using this just as a, an example. I will end up deleting this eventually, but for you, if this is something that you plan on doing in production, make sure you keep this in a secure location. Then go ahead and launch the instance. Watch how fast this happens as it creates a uh, resource group which is the networking, the hardware, the VM, and the image that come together and launch this system. Go ahead and click on the actual resource. It'll load up. Notice that the instance state is pending, which means it hasn't fully booted yet. We'll give it some time to boot. And I'm just so fascinated by, by what is happening in the background. There are some scripts that are being executed from the controller we're logged into right now that are auto picking uh, different server hardware in, in, a, in a data center somewhere in the US East 1C region of Amazon Web Services vast infrastructure. So now that we see our instance state is running, we're gonna go ahead and connect to it. How do we do that? I'm so glad you asked. We go up to connect. Now, what I want you to see is that there are three different options within AWS to connect. We're going to pick the standalone SSH client. I am in Windows, so we're going to use PuTTY. There are other um, terminal emulators you can use, but PuTTY is, is the one I'm going to use for this video. So we're going to go ahead and close that. With PuTTY, this is a little bit different in how you're going to get this key to work. The first thing you want to do is convert that .pem file into a .ppk file because that .pem file isn't going to work in SSHing into that Ubuntu system. So let's go ahead and do this. How do you do it? You have to go to SS or I'm sorry, putty keygen So the putty key generator load in your public key ours was in the downloads folder actually should be in the downloads folder oh I'm sorry I messed up there what we have to do within putty key gen is we have to make sure it's searching for all files now that we found all files go ahead and double click on that you successfully imported it. We want to save it as a private key. Make sure, and don't, don't put a passphrase on it, make sure that you name it the same thing. We're going to do Linux is great. I'm putting it back in downloads. I'm just going to save it. This is where you may want to make sure you're putting it in a secure location and backing it up. So now that I've saved it, 
it's I'm going to confirm that I actually have it within the downloads folder. Awesome. We have that PPK in there. Now we're going to open up the putty client. So putty, you can do putty.exe. You could do extra putty as well. I'm going to go into the SSH configuration area. I'm going to go to auth, which is authenticate. Notice that it says private key file for authentication. I'm going to browse and import that. The P, remember, the PPK file is what you're importing. Now it's as a part of this connection profile. I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to make sure I enter in the IP address or the DNS here. I'm just going to copy and paste because it's, it's easier that way. Open PuTTY back up. And then I'm going to copy and or I'm going to paste in that IP. And then I'm going to open. This is basically saying, do you want Windows to cache this key in the registry so that you don't have to get this message every time? Feel free to say yes so that you don't get this message. I'm going to go ahead and say no. The username to get onto this system is Ubuntu. Hit enter. It's authenticating with the public key. So this is uh, key-based authentication. We didn't have to type a password in there. Um, a lot of the times, key-based authentication is a better method than just using a password because passwords can be brute-forced. Of course, using both can work too. But make sure you have key-based authentication enabled on any of your Linux systems because those aren't as easy to brute force and those aren't as easy to get so it, it makes it harder for attackers to get into alright so that was the process of setting up an Ubuntu system on AWS and connecting to it if you have any questions please go ahead and comment below or find a way to get in contact with me I can help you out have a wonderful day wonderful evening wherever you are and I will see you in the next video